Straight ahead on 12 News, plans on hold. The store you won't be seeing getting a mega makeover this year. Then, strike a pose. Class in Golden Valley that's giving seniors a little extra spring in their step. But first, protecting yourself from a type of crime that's rising at an alarming rate. They have to be very aware of who you're dealing with. 12 News starts right now. As tax season ramps up, cases of tax fraud climb. Thanks for joining us. I'm Alexandra Renslow. And I'm Mike Johnson. Scammers often target the most vulnerable. As Renee Bonneau reports, groups like AARP want seniors to be especially vigilant this time of year. Okay, do you have a phone number? Tax time is about the only time many people trust their personal information with strangers. I wouldn't just give my information out to just anybody. You know what I'm saying? Did you work for Minigas? No. Oh. John Russell keeps a close watch on his data and finances, but still recently became a victim of fraud. Check my checking account probably at least once a week, and I saw this entry for $245 and some odd cents and didn't know what it was. He says being taken advantage of was sickening. It's just, you know, disgusting. You know, you work hard, you know, senior, don't have that much income, and then um, you got sleazy people that are always preying on somebody. Unfortunately, tax season brings with it a unique crop of fraud cases. AARP says there are three types of fraud seniors especially should watch out for. Number one, scam emails. Scammers pose as the IRS and send emails claiming to be doing a tax audit. Do not give any information. The IRS does not audit via email. Number two, fraudulent returns. All scammers need to file a return is your name, social security number, and birth date. If you're told you already filed a return and you haven't, contact the IRS immediately. Finally, intercepted returns. Scammers try to steal paper checks sent in the mail. It's safest to have your tax returns deposited directly in the bank. Filing status single? AARP says you can protect yourself from tax fraud by filing early. Did you take a distribution? If possible, meet face to face with the person doing your taxes. Well, you've got to keep track of it. If you do your own taxes, use a secure computer connection. And a rule of thumb to remember all year long? You have to just be careful about who you give your information to. Somebody calls up and wants information, I don't give it to them. I don't even give it to the church. You get an email from somebody that such and such and such and they need this information? No. Delete. The IRS is working hard to combat identity theft and refund fraud. The agency says the number of IRS criminal investigations into identity theft issues tripled from 2011 to 2012. And Mike and Alex, so far in the 2013 fiscal year, more than 560 criminal ID theft investigations have been opened. All right, you've got to be careful. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. Well, the Golden Valley City Council plans to vote on whether to reestablish the city's Human Rights Commission. City Council will meet tonight on that issue. The Human Rights Commission was disbanded in 2011. City Council at that time was concerned about comments some commission members made about an officer-involved shooting in Golden Valley. In Brooklyn Park, it's back to the drawing board on a proposal to build a bigger Menard store on its site along Lakeland Avenue. The project is on hold for this year after the City Council raised some concerns about the proposal. Now the question is whether Menards in Brooklyn Park can reach a compromise. We're not against Menards. They've been a good business, a good employer, and so we want to keep them. The way Brooklyn Park Council member Mike Trepanier sees it, a possible Menards expansion at its prominent site along County Road 81 is too big a decision not to get it right. You live with that decision for 40 years. Menard's proposal called for tearing down the existing store and rebuilding a store double its size, similar in appearance to the new store in Golden Valley. It's an expansion Menard's estimates will bring at least 100 new jobs to Brooklyn Park. It really has to do with meeting our ordinances and working that out so it's acceptable to Menards and to the city. Building a larger store on the existing site raises city code issues from parking to property lines. And city officials' concerns about the outside appearance of the store have sent the proposal back to the drawing board. The front facade just, in my opinion, wasn't good enough. City staff say they would like to see a more interesting facade with mixed construction materials and colors. The city planning director cites the nearby Walmart redesign as an example. I can come in once a week for the next two years 
And unless you guys get your citizens to shop at the store more, there's probably not a lot more compromises we're willing to make. In January, a Menards representative told the council requested changes to the design would cost too much given the store's revenue. But city officials say Menards representatives did meet with them February 12th and have agreed to submit redesigned plans in the next couple weeks. Council member Mike Trepanier believes a compromise can be reached. It's not a done deal going forward, and but for sure it's not gone. Channel 12's request for an interview with Menards went unanswered. As both sides in the gun debate return to the state capitol this week, a local lawmaker has taken proposals to ban assault weapons off the table. Concerned gun owners turned out in big numbers for three days of hearings in the House earlier this month. Now, State Senator Ron Latt says instead of banning certain weapons, he's focused on proposals that would keep guns out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. That would include universal background checks. His Senate committee will begin hearing testimony on Thursday. U.S. Representative Keith Ellison is in the East African nation of Somalia today. Minnesota has one of the largest populations of Somali Americans in the U.S. Constituents of Congressman Ellison requested he visit the country. Ellison is visiting Mogadishu, which until recently was considered one of the world's most dangerous cities. After decades of anarchy, the Obama administration formally recognized the Somali government this year. How big of a problem is binge drinking in the Northwest Metro? A new survey of young adults provides good news for worried parents, but also sheds light on areas that still need attention. We certainly know that young adults are involved in um, car crashes. We see them here at North Memorial. Car crashes are one danger of abusing alcohol, especially among young adults, but concerns go beyond drinking and driving. A substance abuse group called Partnership for Change surveyed nearly 300 18 to 25-year-olds about their drinking habits. The good news, 65% of young people who are under the age of 21 don't drink. The reality is that most young adults are making good choices, so we were glad that the survey um, showed that and proved that. But there's not so good news about binge drinking. That's defined as having at least five drinks in one sitting. 52% of 21 to 25 year olds in the survey admit they've done that in the past month. But even more concerning is the 17% of that group that admits to being extreme binge drinkers. That's having 11 or more drinks in one sitting. That's a, a real concern for us. That's extremely dangerous drinking, um, where we would expect that we might be seeing them in the hospital or they might be seen by law enforcement or have other consequences from that level of drinking, and we really want to be doing something to change that. Sheila Nesbitt says the group will be working with employers and police to see what can be done to curb binge drinking, starting with where it happened. We want to find out where they were last drinking so we can try and reach them in those locations to change their behavior. Nesbitt says about half of the binge drinking cases happen in private homes. Well, coming up, making yourself more agile and less fragile. We will take you to a class in Golden Valley that's adding years worth of confidence for seniors. And later in sports, a high school senior from Plymouth scores a big individual honor in girls hockey. But first, a check of your AccuWeather forecast. It's preventable, but it remains one of Minnesota's most chronic childhood diseases. We're talking about tooth decay. A report released by the Minnesota Department of Health shows 55% of third graders have filled or untreated cavities. According to the report, low-income children bore the greatest burden of oral diseases, and those children were one and a half times more likely to have tooth decay than their more affluent peers. The state's health commissioner calls the results of the report unacceptable. Dr. Ed Ellinger says the state needs to do a better job investing in public health and access to routine dental care. Well, talk to anyone who takes yoga classes and they'll say it's an exercise that's good for all ages and skill levels. In today's Health Check, Delane Cleveland takes a look at how yoga can improve the health of senior citizens. Well, welcome to class, everybody. Take a nice deep inhale right here. To step into a yoga class oh, good job. is to experience an exercise system that dates back 
5,000 years. It's a joining or juncture of opposites, which be sun and moon, which means if you do something forward, you do it back, side to side. So therefore, good balance. Using your knee as a lever. Annette Fragali has taught yoga for 20 years. Rotate at both ankles. Both in settings like this at Golden Valley's Brookview Community Center and for people watching at home on Northwest Community Television. Anybody can do it. It's a very democratic way of exercise. Really good for your spine and your posture and your balance and your strength. That's a fact not lost on Golden Valley resident Barb Tillman. I had realized that I was starting to kind of uh, bend over and have bad posture. And uh, so I was looking for something to help me up. That was 10 years ago. Back and down. Then she started taking Annette's yoga classes and noticed a significant improvement. I stand up straighter and my body feels tighter, um, and um, I always feel good when I walk out of the class. This class for seniors lasts one hour. Each starts with a series of breathing exercises. Keep breathing. Followed by a variety of different poses. Cross in front. Some more difficult than others. Some things are really tough. They might not look challenging, but they're really tough. Annette says yoga isn't as aerobic as other exercises people could do at a local gym, but that doesn't make it any less beneficial. First of all, it improves your balance. And as you get older, that's one of the things that we lose is our balance. It strengthens you. It opens all of your joints. Old or young, she says it's an exercise that anyone can do. That's what you strive for. Make yourself one step better than the day from which you were born. In Golden Valley, Delane Cleveland, 12 News. Daytime yoga with Annette takes place every Tuesday through March 19th at the Brookview Community Center in Golden Valley. And we are all sitting up a little bit taller yes, up here, right? No <laughs> That's right. And coming up, the special visitors that had students howling in Brooklyn Center. But first in sports, Cooper's girls basketball team shoots for the program's first ever conference title. John Jacobson with that and more when we come back. John Jacobson with sports, and uh, here's a name I've heard John mention yeah. a lot over the last few months when we are talking about girls hockey, Danny Cameronisi. She's all all over it. She is, and you know, five-year varsity player, and uh, she's been around a long time, and, and a big award for her this week. For the first time since her eighth grade year, well, Miss Danny Cameronisi is playing in the state girls hockey tournament. That comes Wednesday. This week, the Blake School senior also received a big individual honor. Cameronisi is the Star Tribune's Metro Player of the Year. Danny is the Bears' all-time winning scorer with 198 goals, including 54 this season, carrying the Bears to the Section 5A championship. She is the second Blake player to win the award. Catherine Chute was Metro Player of the Year in 2007. The Bears' first game at State is Wednesday at 1 o'clock against Mount West Tonka. Benilde St. Margaret's number 19, Kelly Panic, also of Plymouth, joins Cameron Easy as a first-team All-Metro pick, while Breck senior number 6, Kate Shipper from Brooklyn Park, was named second team All-Metro. It's rematch time for Cooper and Benilde St. Margaret's in girls basketball Tuesday night with the North Suburban Conference lead on the line. The Hawks lead the conference with a perfect 14-0 mark. The Red Knights are 13-1 with the only loss coming in the first meeting with Cooper. For the Hawks, it's a chance to clinch what would be the first conference championship in school history in girls basketball. I mean, it's not really necessarily pressure. I think it's more we're just uh, working at it, so it kind of motivates us more than makes us or puts pressure onto us. So, you know, we really want to get that title, so we're working at it. The Hawks beat the Red Knights 55-47 at Cooper in mid-January. They've been studying tape of that first game and have an idea of what to expect. They like to take their time on offense, and sometimes we like rush it, and they're good at like finishing shots. They make you work for a long time, and if we continue to work and continue to do the things that we're supposed to do, everybody does their responsibilities, then um, you know, I think that uh, it gives us a good chance to win the game again. We'll have highlights of the Cooper Benilde game Wednesday, starting at 4 here on 12 News. It is section tournament time in boys hockey. Defending state class AA champ Benilde St. Margaret's is looking for a return trip to state. The Red Knights are the number one seed in the very tough Section 6 AA tournament ahead of Minnetonka and Wyzetta. Benilde is 20-5 coming into the tournament and riding an eight-game winning streak. The Red Knights split two games with Wyzetta and beat Minnetonka in their only meeting. They know it's a tough road to get back to the XL, but they're ready for the challenge. 
We've taken on most of the section teams and uh, we did a pretty good job, so we're looking forward to that. Definitely, uh, it's our last chance to get back to the state tournament, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, it's going to be a great competition in the, uh, all, all the way through. So, Yeah, all the teams have great two-way play. It's tough to stop them on defense, and then going against them, their defense is really good as well. So I think that's going to be our biggest challenge, is getting everyone playing two ways and having a strong game for 60 minutes. Been able to host the winner of Tuesday's Armstrong Cooper game in the Section 6 AA quarterfinals Thursday night. Benel's chances this season got a lot better when standout Grant Bessie decided to return to play his senior season rather than leave for junior hockey. Jay Wilcox introduces us to Bessie at our Sports Jam show this week. Here's a clip from that story. The trend is for many top flight high school players to leave for junior hockey or other opportunities before their senior season. And for Bessie, it could have meant leaving on a high note after last season. There was a quite a bit of outside pressure, especially, you know, just from other people who, you know, think they knew, thought they knew what, would be, what was best for me. And, you know, the junior team that drafted me, they wanted me to come next year. But, you know, I really left it up to, you know, what, um, you know, Wisconsin wanted me to do. And, you know, I talked to Coach Eves about it, and he said I could do whatever I felt, you know, whatever I wanted. And, you know, I talked with my family about it and with Coach Foley. And, you know, it came to the decision that it'd be best that if I stayed in high school and finished out my senior year at Penel St. Margaret's. Coming back, you know, for your senior, for the vast majority of high school kids, it is what's best for them. And uh, so I certainly was excited for us, but I was excited for the opportunity that, that Grant had, too, to kind of further cement him his place in, in really hockey, Minnesota hockey history. Watch the rest of Grant's story this week on Sports Jam. It airs three times daily, every Monday through Wednesday here on Channel 12. Wisconsin will get a, a good hockey player when he goes there. Next. Thanks a lot, John. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Up next, a reading lesson that students paid extra special attention to. And we're back in just a minute. And finally, some distinguished visitors had students howling in Brooklyn Center. Uh, Governor Dayton and Education Commissioner Brenda Caselius read students at Northport Elementary School a book called Wolf. Those are the wolves howling that you heard. The special visit was part of I Love to Read Month. One student asked the governor what his favorite book was. The governor told the students the book he's reading now, called The Winter Soldiers, is a Revolutionary War classic. But he says he is also consumed with reading lots and lots of proposed legislation these days. Not exactly light reading. <laughs> no, maybe not. It's not all his favorite reading no, either. Probably. probably not. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 4.